The United States comprises 5% of the world's population, but Americans own 50% of the world's civilian firearms. So if we look at this chart of civilian held firearms worldwide, this goes up to 2018. And it shows that in North America, particularly the United States, by 2018, there was just a shade less than 400 million small arms in the United States. That number has increased over the last two years. <clears throat> so there are more than 400 million guns in America, in approximately 40% of American homes. The United States has the highest homicide rate among the world's industrial nations. So here we see gun deaths per 100,000 people. And the United States has more than four times the rate of Italy, more than six times the rate of Canada, and 30 times the gun homicide rate of Great Britain and France. Now, countries such as Finland and Switzerland also have high rate of gun ownership, but there, there are very low rates of crime in part because those countries have very strict gun control laws. The debate over the right to bear arms is one of the most contentious issues in recent history in the United States. But that debate is filled with misconceptions and fallacies by people on all sides of the controversy. For example, did you know that for much of its history, the National Rifle Association actually supported gun control. Did you know that the founding fathers required gun ownership along with regulation of guns? And did you know that the true pioneers of the modern pro-gun movement were the Black Panthers? So we're going to address all of those issues in this lecture. Central to the debate over gun control is the meaning of the Second Amendment in the United States Constitution, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Now, I'm not sure about the grammatical correctness of the Second Amendment, but what I am sure is that it is mattingly ambiguous. Gun rights supporters unquestionably believe that this Second Amendment is all about gun rights and that it says nothing about regulation. They maintain that the Second Amendment clearly guarantees an individual's right to own guns. On the other hand, gun control advocates believe that the Second Amendment is all about regulation and that it says nothing about an individual's right to bear arms. They maintain that it only guarantees a state's right to have a well-regulated militia. In what has become known as the militia theory of the Second Amendment, Gun control supporters argue that the amendment gives militias the right to bear arms, but says nothing about an individual's rights to bear arms. Others maintain that the militia represented the entire adult male citizenry who were not simply allowed to keep their own arms, but they were required to do so by the Second Amendment. A federal law in 1792 declared free male citizens of a certain age to be members of the militia, and they were required to outfit themselves with firearms. Even today, federal law defines the militia of the United States as consisting of all able-bodied males at least 17 years of age and under 45 years of age. So <clears throat> we are now going to look at the history of gun rights and gun control in America. So let us begin with the revolutionary era. The framers of the Constitution 
were very much afraid that a standing army could potentially be used to suppress the people. Just as King George III used the British military to suppress the colonists. So instead of a permanent standing army, the framers preferred an army made up of the common people who could be organized into local militias in order to fight off enemies when necessary, just as the revolutionaries did in the 1770s. So the Second Amendment was included in the Bill of Rights to reassure Americans that Congress would not have the power to destroy state militias by disarming the people. The amendment said nothing about gun control. While the founders were fond of guns, they were advocates of gun control. The founding generation had many forms of gun control. They may not have referred to it as gun control, but they understood that gun rights had to be balanced with public safety needs. And so the founders supported forcible disarmament of slaves, free blacks, and mulattoes, people of mixed race. And they feared that these groups might use guns to revolt against their slave masters. And so the founders wanted to forcibly disarm them. White people too were targets of gun control. Before the revolution, at least one colony, Maryland, banned a law, a passed a law that barred Catholics from possessing firearms. People who didn't support the revolution were ordered to turn over their guns. Now, because there was no standing army, the founders required all free men between the ages of 18 and 45 to outfit themselves with a musket, a rifle, or other firearm suitable for military service. Government officials would inspect these weapons and account for the firearms on public rolls. And so that inspection really represented an early version of gun registration. And there were other types of gun control in the revolutionary era. For example, there were laws that required gunpowder to be stored on the top floors of buildings. If they were stored on the bottom floors and there was an explosion, that might destroy the entire building. There were laws that required the safe storage of arms imposed on slave owners. They were required to keep their firearms locked up to ensure that slaves could not get a hold of them. In Boston, city leaders determined that the combustibility of gunpowder posed such a danger that all loaded firearms had to be kept out of buildings. So these were laws that were tantamount to gun control. Yet there is no record of anyone complaining that these laws infringed upon their right to keep and bear arms. The basic idea that gun possession must be balanced with gun safety laws was one that the founders endorsed. The idea that people had a right to keep and bear arms and that the government had the right to regulate such weapons was seen as consistent with the Second Amendment. Now in the 19th century, justification for the right to bear arms was increasingly based on the notion that guns were necessary for personal defense against criminal attack. Many white